theory, this mini PC can become a true gaming beast. Don't get me wrong, not the way it comes out of the box. You'd have to purchase a specific accessory to achieve that. Still, what makes high FPS gaming even possible is the super fast Thunderbolt 4 port today's device comes with. This allows us to connect an eGPU, an external graphics card to the mini PC, and that in turn transforms smooth gaming into reality, despite the small form factor of this device. Today we'll be looking at the Ace Magician TK11A0, coming equipped with the Intel Core i5 11320H CPU at its heart. Although there are only 4 cores and 8 threads at our disposal, we do get the massively improved Intel Iris Xe graphics on board here, that performs pretty well in office workloads or when watching movies and doesn't even do too poorly in light gaming. Furthermore, today's TK11A0 also has two nice gimmicks, those being a fingerprint sensor and a built-in speaker. In this video we'll talk about how good or bad and above all how practical all of this really is at the end of the day. Of course, I will also talk about my results for power consumption, temperatures and noise levels. At the time of this video, we are talking about 370 US dollars for this device on the manufacturer's official website. Unfortunately, the product seems to be out of stock at the moment, including everywhere else I checked. I'm not sure whether or not this mini PC has already reached end of life, but it doesn't matter. What I'm talking about and showing you today also applies to comparable models. As far as what comes included, I'd say it's a very complete package. This includes the mini PC itself, the power cord along with the power supply rated at an output power of 65 watts, also included a VESA mounting bracket with screws to mount the device behind your monitor, then there's an HDMI cable and a quick start guide. The aesthetics of the device are kept very simple and minimalistic, and I do like that. Size actually plays a role here for many at 138 by 138 millimeters and a height of 53 millimeters, the TK11A0 is of course quite compact. As mentioned before, at its core is the Intel Core i5 11320H processor based on Tiger Lake, released in 2021, but do not fear, it's still perfectly usable to this day. The highlight of such a CPU probably is its integrated Intel Iris Xe graphics unit. Compared to previous iGPU solutions by Intel, the Iris Xe graphics is a huge step up, translating to significantly better performance in games. We are getting 16GB of DDR4 RAM running in dual channel clocked at 2400MHz. When it comes to storage, there's a 512GB M.2 NVMe SSD in there, so it's a really fast one. Windows, Windows 11 Pro to be specific, is already pre-installed and activated out of the box. After entering a short command, I discovered the license is our usual volume MUC type. Now what ports are at our disposal? Starting at the front, a 3.5mm audio jack, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 and on the far right, hold on tight, a USB-C port based on Thunderbolt 4. This means that not only is the bandwidth at an incredible 40 gigabits per second, but an 8K monitor also can be hooked up to it. Even power can be provided. Probably the biggest highlight here, these mentioned features are perfect for an external graphics card setup. You simply connect an external graphics dock with a regular dedicated desktop GPU to this mini PC. This is the ultimate way to boost your gaming performance x-fold on a device like this. And since the built-in CPU is still fast enough for many games out there, the results are decent frame rates. So Thunderbolt 4 is a huge feature here with lots of potential. On the opposite side of the device, there are two more USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports for us to use, one HDMI and one DisplayPort, one Gigabit LAN and a Kensington lock. Unfortunately, there's no SD card reader built in, which is a bit of a shame. Now because we have a total of an HDMI, display port and the aforementioned Thunderbolt 4 port, it is of course possible to operate up to three monitors with this device. It shouldn't turn out to be a surprise then that we are talking of Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.3. On the top of the TK11A0, there is the power button and at the same time the fingerprint sensor, an all-in-one solution basically. 
The fingerprint sensor works great and responds quickly. It's implemented very well. So instead of having to enter passwords, you could simply use your fingerprint for login purposes. It's definitely faster and more convenient. The built-in speaker that I mentioned is located on the bottom of the mini PC. Admittedly, I was expecting the worst in terms of sound quality, but I was rather positively surprised. There certainly is some bass there, and the speaker is capable of reaching a reasonable volume. Unfortunately, the mids are noticeably buried in the mix and end up sounding unclear at times. However, compared to most built-in monitor speakers and the like, the speaker found in this device still counts to one of the better ones out there, I would say. Now if you unscrew the device, we are given easy access to the optional upgrades. For instance, RAM and the SSD. But there's also room for a 2.5 inch drive to expand one's storage. Maybe not solved exactly elegantly, but I mean, it works. When the mini PC is first powered on, we are offered a good selection of languages to choose from, as is typical for Ace Magician. I also find it very praiseworthy that they avoided any pre-installed bloatware. What we have here is a clean Windows installation without any third-party programs installed. Now once I put 100% load onto the CPU by running Cinebench 2024, I get to a clock speed of around 3.3 GHz. While at that frequency, I was able to read out a CPU package power of 47 watts. But within just a few seconds, the CPU clock drops down to 2.8 GHz. Peak performance is therefore only achieved for a brief moment, as usual. When additionally also bringing 100% load onto the integrated Iris Xe graphics into the mix, the CPU clock speed obviously drops even further. If I now run through the Cinebench 2024 benchmark, the CPU performance achieved by the i5 11320H is more in the lower end of the spectrum, even ranking below my aging Lenovo laptop featuring a Ryzen 5. However, I wouldn't state that this Core i5 is a snail in everyday tasks. Of course, you shouldn't expect perfect performance from a device in this performance tier, especially not in workloads such as image and video editing. But if you're not that sensitive when it comes to raw performance, you'll still be able to achieve your goals even in more complex areas of application. You just need a little patience. The 4K UHD screen resolution no longer causes me any fuss, unlike it was the case with Intel's UHD graphics, where the refresh rate was oftentimes limited to either 30 or a maximum of 50 Hz, depending on a monitor model. Not any surprise, 4K video playback doesn't pose the slightest issue. The TK11A0 is ideal for video streaming or generally watching movies. Basically a great home theater solution. This can also clearly be seen when glancing over to the power consumption I measured. It's nice and low. The device merely draws 11 watts when idling and 17 watts while watching movies, but sucks around 60 watts from the wall when fully loaded which in all fairness is still extremely power efficient compared to desktop PCs. The temperatures aren't that great at first glance, but they are mostly okay since the CPU is designed with fairly high temperatures in mind. It's after all a mobile CPU meant for laptops anyway. During low loads such as watching movies, the fan remains off for the most part. The device basically operates semi-passively. Once you go pedal to the metal, you quickly notice you ramp up to very audible 45 decibels in my case. Luckily, I wouldn't speak of an annoying fan noise. I'll be honest with you, I was expecting close to nothing at all in terms of gaming performance. That's how little my trust in Intel's integrated graphics was. It was therefore very gratifying that I was convinced of the opposite. Well, maybe not the opposite but at least the Iris Xe graphics are very much usable even in more modern, demanding game titles, albeit not at high frame rates, that is. We now see somewhat similar performance to AMD Ryzen models, and in the best case scenario, Intel is able to keep up. Needless to say, neither AMD nor Intel truly deliver with their integrated graphics solutions in such price ranges when talking AAA games. When picking and firing up less demanding titles or something from past years, we are quickly in acceptable territory in terms of the offered gaming experience. Still, I want to emphasize once more that this Intel device is equipped with Thunderbolt 4, so technically it has a gigantic edge over AMD solutions. 
That is if you're willing to get an external graphics card solution, a kind of dock. If you do, you can even keep up with certain regular gaming desktop PCs, as long as those four cores don't slow you down too much. Six or eight certainly would have been a great advantage here. In the end, you don't end up with the very best performance in areas such as general productivity, image and video editing, for instance. Then again, it's just four cores and eight threads. Conclusion. I admit that my expectations for the TK11A0 initially were quite low until I looked at its feature set. Overall, you can get work done on this mini PC and that's even coming from me. But of course, you will have to lower your expectations a bit. The highlight certainly is not so much the performance of today's mini PC, but rather its overall package. I particularly like the Thunderbolt 4 port, the fingerprint sensor, the built-in speaker and the option to expand the storage via a 2.5 inch drive. What I dislike seeing here is the lack of an SD card reader. In my opinion, such should not be missing from a device of this type. Also, the price could have been a bit lower. When it comes to raw CPU performance, honestly, you'd probably be better served by going with an AMD Ryzen counterpart. Aside from that, the Ace Magician TK11A0 or a similar mini PC certainly can be recommended, at least if you know how to effectively put such a device to good use. With that said, thanks a lot for watching and until the next one.